ahead and get started today. My name is Lieutenant Kevin Miller. I'm the Public Information Officer for the Copper's Cove Police Department. Today's press conference, we're going to hear from the Mayor of Copper's Cove, Ms. Brady Diaz. Her first name is spelled B-R-A-D-I. Last name is Diaz, D-I-A-Z. You will then hear from the Copper's Cove City Manager, Ryan Haverlock. First name is R-Y-A-N. Last name is H-A-V-E-R-L-A-H. You will then hear from Chief Eddie Wilson. His first name is E-D-D-I-E. -D -D -E. Last name is Wilson, W-I-L-S-O-N. We will open the press conference open for questioning at the end of the press conference, so please hold your questions till the end. We're gonna go ahead and get started today with Mayor Brady Diaz. Thank you for joining us this morning. I am Coppers Cove Mayor Brady Diaz. I have made it my goal to be transparent and direct with our citizens in all aspects of local governance. The trust between the citizens and the city is paramount. The following comments from City Manager Ryan Haverlaw and Police Chief Eddie Wilson will provide factual information about the shooting that occurred Sunday, May 23rd, 2021. And with that, I'll turn it over to City Manager Ryan Thank you, Mayor Diaz. Um, it's been a long six days since this past Sunday. Um, on Sunday, May 23rd, 2021, an incident culminated with a shooting involving an off-duty Coppers Cove police officer on Robertson Avenue. Police Chief Eddie Wilson requested the Texas Rangers with the Texas Department of Public Safety to investigate this incident as a independent third party. Thank you to Texas Rangers for agreeing to investigate this incident and for conducting their investigation with high importance. I, as the city manager, support our police and will continue to stand for them. And when the situation demands it, team members are held accountable for their actions. The city of Copper's Cove has been upfront and direct about situations involving a loss or perceived loss of trust. Today, we are being as direct as possible about the shooting incident that occurred this past Sunday. I appreciate the community being patient to allow the investigative process to occur. And at this time, I'll turn it over to uh, Chief Eddie Wilson, who will provide more details about the incident. I want to start by thanking the Department of Public Safety and the Texas Rangers for their professionalism and the work they've put into this investigation. If there's more to be done, they will continue to have my full cooperation and confidence in bringing this investigation to closure. Most importantly, thank you to the citizens of the community. You've patiently waited for answers, allowing us to direct focus toward this critical matter. I take solace in knowing some communities would not have responded in the same way. In return, we owe it to all of our citizens to be as transparent as this investigation will allow us to be. Please understand that when particular information can be and should be released is controlled by state law and by legitimate investigative objectives. This has been done to obtain all information, all available information, and discover the truth in every aspect of this incident. I can only provide very li limited information on the shooting itself, but can provide more specific details of the events that led up to the shooting. There is also a video that is being held as evidence with the Department of Public Safety. As stated, there is still more investigative work to do, and releasing the video under state law is tied to the integrity of the investigation and prosecution. The, the information I'm about to provide has been discussed with the Department of Public Safety and the District Attorney's Office. I will not be able to answer any further questions about the investigation because of the roles of our various agencies. On Sunday, May 23rd, at approximately 12.40 p.m., the female driver, later identified as Lucretia Murray, was traveling westbound on Robertson Avenue, approaching off-duty officer Eric Stoneburner, who was also, or who was actually traveling eastbound. Miss Murray turned her vehicle across both lanes of traffic, appearing to try and back her vehicle into a driveway in the 900 block. Mr. Stoneburner yielded as she backed toward the driveway and then decided to drive past the backing vehicle's front once space presented itself. As he proceeded, she also started to move forward, causing both to pause to prevent striking one another. 
Mr. Stoneburner then drove past the front of Ms. Murray's vehicle and continued to proceed east. Ms. Murray then passed Mr. Stoneburner in the 1400 block to his left, almost striking the front left of Mr. Stoneburner's vehicle. Ms. Murray then stopped her vehicle in the 1500 block, just short of the intersection of William Street, with Mr. Stoneburner stopping behind her. No vehicle chase or off-duty traffic stop took place during this incident. Ms. Murray then exited the vehicle and confronted Mr. Stoneburner, who also left his vehicle with his firearm pointed at Ms. Murray. The course of events that followed led to Mr. Stoneburner discharging multiple rounds, striking Ms. Murray multiple times. Ms. Murray was later transported by Cochran's Co. BMS to the Scott and White Emergency Room in Temple with non-life-threatening wounds. We wish Ms. Murray the absolute best during her recovery process. Based on the Department of Public Safety's current findings, a complaint and warrant were issued charging Mr. Stoneburner with aggravated assault, serious bodily injury, and use of a deadly weapon. Yesterday, he turned himself in at the Coryell County Sheriff's Office. He also resigned his employment with the Cockersville Police Department before turning himself in. As a department, we cannot support Mr. Stoneburner's decision to use deadly force in the moment and manner in which he did. The law and our department policies limit the use of deadly force to situations when an officer reasonably believes that he or a third person are in imminent and immediate danger of death or serious bodily injury. Because the facts we have do not show that to be true, we agree with the decision made by the Department of Public Safety. We, were, we have worked hard to build legitimacy and trust within our community and work just as hard to rebuild any trust lost as a result of this event. We hope that our citizens do not judge us based solely on this incident, but instead on how we handled this event. We will continue to do so based on the true facts. We ask that our citizens judge us on how we perform our duties each day with high standards and a commitment to compliance with the law and procedural justice. Questions will be taken, but we, requ we request we request that you do not ask questions about the investigation or decisions that are still ongoing. Any questions regarding the investigation must be directed to the Department of Public Safety. Go ahead and open it for questions. So is this more of a road rage incident? Uh, I, I'm fearful of labeling labeling, labeling road rage, but uh, the incident did start from the, the interaction of two vehicles, yes. Do we, uh, do we have any information as far as which jail he's being held in and what bond is available right now? Uh, from what, what, I, what I understand is he has since been released, but as far as the bond and that information, you'd have to contact DPS or the Coral County Sheriff's Office. Uh, I'm sure you'll have access to the actual complaint uh, as, it, as it's public record. How, uh, how long has the officer, was the officer on the force? Counting his time in the academy and field training, almost five years. Has the Copper's Cove Police Department reached out to the family of uh, I'm Lucretia sorry. Murray? Has yes. the family reached out to the uh, family of Lucretia Murray? The investigation, again, is still ongoing, and that's not me. Sorry. Uh, the investigation is still ongoing and the contacts that have been made at this point through the course of the investigation, I am not sure of. So moving forward, how will this affect the police department? Will this um, cause any policy changes for training wise, training purposes of how to conduct themselves off duty? Um, what kind of changes might take place in the future for the department? It's too early to, to say right now, but I can assure you that uh, this event will serve as a training tool for our department. So when we spoke with the uh, Miss Murray at that location, she said that she lived in the area. Is it uh, factual that both parties lived in that general facility? I'm not going to give that information out. Um, if you could comment, if it's possible, sir, um, what should this officer have done in that incident? That is, uh, that's a difficult question to ask because it's not just a standard textbook way to handle every situation. It is dependent on uh, a lot of things, a lot of variables that we don't always see. Uh, a 
emotion, training, experience, all those things. So uh, that's really not a fair question for me to answer. Are you able to spell the officer's, uh, former officer's uh, name? Yes, first name is Eric, uh, E-R-I-C. Last name is Stoneburner, S-T-O-N-E-B-U-R-N-E-R, -E -E just like it sounds. How old was the officer? Or he is? How old is the officer? Yes. I'm not sure of his exact age. Okay. I would be guessing if I told you. Okay. Do you mind running through the charges again? Uh, he has been charged with aggravated assault, serious bodily injury, and use of a deadly weapon. Uh, Chief, was there uh, anyone else in the vehicle with uh, the officer when this situation took place? Yes, the officer's uh, granddaughter was uh, in the vehicle. You know, and we opened up the press conference with talking about trust within the community and just talking with neighbors at the location. Everybody was worried and saying they oftentimes moved out of areas with high crime to get away from situations like these. And so if there was a concerned or worried citizen sitting in front of you, you know, what would you tell them? That's a great question. Uh, first of all, this did happen in an area that I don't consider to be a high crime area, first off. Uh, and secondly, I would want to assure those citizens that uh, regardless of what their opinion is of this event, that uh, we have individuals that come to work every day and put their heart and soul into everything that they do, and uh, uh, they're going to do their absolute best to provide that protection that they're seeking. You did say that this is going to be a learning experience for the police department. Uh, what are some things that you guys can learn from this? Uh, I can't answer that without giving you specifics about right. what occurred, but uh, it's not just this incident. Anytime we have a major event occur in our community and we are responding uh, to deal with that incident, we're always going to look at it afterwards and use that as a training tool. Uh, at this time, the, the age of the granddaughter, is it was just a minor child? Minor, minor child? Yes. that this um, story has, I saw it on like some national um, articles like the New York Times, um, and you know at this critical moment people can, you know, judge police officers um, in harsh ways. What would you say um, to people about the Coppice Cove uh, Police Department, those who may, you know, be thinking negative things about the department because of this incident? Uh, yeah, another good question. Uh, the absolute 100 best way, come talk to us. Get to know us and then formulate your opinion outside of an enforcement interaction. Uh, we have human beings here, just like everywhere, everywhere else. So uh, the best, 100% best way to do that is communicate. Come and have a conversation with us. Uh, to that point, I mean, I know you kind of mentioned how, you know, you, you spoke very much with uh, Lucretia, how you wish her obviously the very well best how important is that, not just in this scenario, in treating this investigation, but also, of course, you know, moving forward with, with any incident, for that matter? Can you explain the question again? Yeah, sure. Um, so basically, you mentioned how, you know, we have human beings here. We, yes. we want to make it evident that, you know, these are, these are human beings with compassion that can be understanding as much as possible. Mm -hmm. um, how much do you want to stress how much you've been working with Lucretia and you've been working with all of the proper authorities just to make sure that everything is laid out as best as possible, not just with this case, but of course moving forward with further incidents. Yep. So our department has not worked at all with Ms. Murray yet because again, this investigation is being done by DPS and we don't want to impede on the work that they have to do. Uh, we are uh, conducting an internal investigation, of course, but uh, again, we're not going to make those contacts in until, the DP, until DPS gives us the okay to do that. Um, I'm not sure how to answer the other part of that question. Sure. And, uh, was there anyone else, in the, uh, any children or anybody else in the vehicle with Ms. Murray? Uh, from what I understand, she was the only one in the vehicle. When, uh, and you said that there was video uh, pertaining to this. Is that doorbell video? Is that cell phone video? Or what type of video is uh, being held in connection to this? I can only tell you that we have video uh, because again, it's under evidence with DPS. Yes, sir. And that's not for me to speak on behalf of. Yes, sir. 
any chance that that video may be released to the public at any time? You would have to ask the Department of Public Safety that question. But I can assure you that before it's all said and done, it'll be available at some point, I'm sure. Uh, do you know where, the, so knowing where the video came from, that's still, it's tied into that as well? It's the same question. Yes. You said you're doing an internal investigation. I mean, without giving specifics, what does that internal investigation pertain to? I mean, because there's obviously the the investigation by DPS um, that's investigating the shooting inc incident yes. by the officer. What is the uh, internally the police department investigating? DPS's responsibility is to conduct a criminal investigation uh, to see or seek the potential or to find out if criminal charges need to be filed. And in this case, they demonstrated that. Our investigation is to determine whether or not internal policies were violated. Yeah. questions thank you all for coming thank you okay I'd like to conclude to let you know that if you uh, would like a copy of chief statement lieutenant Baker will have it at the back for you um, thank you for coming and we really appreciate your time